John, we've come to Drain's Farm here today near Lisbon. Um, you have a, a farm here milking cows, but you're doing something differently as well in terms of bottling milk. Could you just maybe give a description of your farm and yeah. what you're doing in your wider business? Uh, we, we've been going 90 years this year. Um, and it started with my, my granda and two of his brothers. And then um, now, the present day, we're uh, bottling milk, um, pasteurizing it, doing cream, whipping cream, the whole lot. Uh, and then we started making ice cream about six years ago as well. Um, I think we're milking about 150, 160 cows. And then we're bringing in milk as well um, from local farms and okay. processing it on site. Okay, so how long are you selling milk? Um, uh, we're selling milk 90 years. 90 years? Yeah, it started with a, a wee horse and cart and a, a churn of milk on the back. Okay. And now yeah. we've, I think, 14 or 15 lorries out in the road. Okay, how many staff employed? Uh, total, probably about 40, 40, 45. Okay, yeah, considerable business. So yeah, well, we're not the biggest dairy out there, but we're, we're trying to hold our own. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're making using robots again? Yeah, with three Lily robots. Okay. In the yeah. Job. yeah. So I suppose we've come up from the south today just to look at slurry storage systems, and um, you have an aeration system, I think, in the tanks yeah, here. Yeah, we've had that in probably seven or eight years now. Okay. Maybe a wee bit less. Yeah, and what's the benefit of that, do you find? Uh, they don't have to mix it. Uh, there isn't as much of a smell comes out of it. Slurry tower itself then, you've covered that as well. Why did you yeah, cover that, do you think? Yeah, covered that really to keep smell down and uh, stop water going into the tank as well. I find that there's quite a lot of water getting in from rain. Okay. Um, and there's quite a few houses getting built near here, so it's just really the future proof of the suppose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. get on with the neighbours. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay, that's very it. good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jason, we might have a look so at the slurry tower. And uh, see yep. how it was made and yep. what's put together. So, Jason, we're looking at a covered tower here. Yes. Um, why why would people cover a tower? Well, basically, I suppose one big factor, uh, I suppose, to reduce uh, the amount of rainwater that's getting into their into their tanks. I suppose the average rainfall here, you're talking 48 inches plus uh, with us. So it's essentially increasing your storage. By a, by a ring, uh, and the cost of uh, spreading that nowadays with increase in the in the price of diesel and whatnot, it uh, it, it factors onto the to the payback. Uh, another big point, I suppose, is the the emissions, is really reducing the ammonia, and then they were up towards a ninety percent reduction in ammonia there by by fitting one of these roofs. And is it the wind it's protecting the slurry from, or is it uh, just the open air? Or yeah, it's the, it's the constant, it's the, the one blowing across the top of the roof, take, taking that away all the time, so at least that's containing that. Okay. Now, there still, there still is a small uh, vent there to, to let, that, let that off, but it is reducing that substantially, yeah. Okay. So, for somebody that has a tank already in place, or, you know, even building a new one and they want to put a cover on, what's the process? How do you make it? Or? Well, the, the process is the roof is made specifically for that, uh, for that store, so it's measured up, and f so they're all, they're all made to, to suit uh, each tank. Now, they can be easily fitted to nearly all stores, unless uh, they're not structurally sound, they're really old uh, tanks I'm referring to there. Uh, the the perma store tanks, there, there's no issue on that. Uh, there would have to be uh, a reinforcing ring put around the top angle here, just at the, t the top of the store, to take the, the pressures off that. They don't all need that, some of them come out and they're manufactured like that, but it's a, it's a check that we have to do uh, to, to make that. Uh, the concrete stores as well, there's no issue uh, fitting to those um, as, as, as well as that. Another accessory there that we, we can put on here is a, is a manway here, just for, for safety reason so it allows access that if anybody ever needed into their store uh, when the store is empty they can they can screw off that. Okay so how is the cover suspended? The cover suspended there with a, a tropical hardwood uh, pole uh, depending on the diameter it'll be 400 by 400 or 500 by 500 as well so that is uh, fitted on a, on a stainless steel uh, box and which is bolted to the floor dead centre so that, that then suspends the roof. So there's a stainless steel cap at the top of the roof, which fits onto the top of the pole. On that stainless steel dish, which fits down evenly when the pressures are put on with the straps coming down the sides of the store, 
that's uh, that's how it's uh, held and suspended. Now, as you can see, the straps come down here to this first angle on it. That's where you have three straps for pretty much every sheet, and a sheet's nine foot. Okay, so how many straps are going back then to the middle pole? Uh, how many? How yeah, many? How yeah, many straps? Yeah. How yeah. often? So you have one one every three foot okay. here. So depend again, depending on the diameter, that changes with the amount of straps that's going back there. Okay, right. Um, cost wise. Cost-wise, on a typical roof, this 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 here is about seventy-six foot in diameter. You're probably talking there somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand sterling. Right. Uh, and is there grants for that? There's grants uh, available uh, as part of a process uh, in the north at the at the minute. Um, so there is. Again, there will be grants coming on for this, basically for reducing the, the emissions. Okay. So that's. So in terms of the north, the market in the north and the south, how many people would buy a cover versus maybe people in the south? Or well, we have we have fitted uh, a substantial amount of roofs in the last 12 months uh, because of a grant scheme that was was offered here, and uh, there was a reasonable good uptake on it. So, and that was a 40% grant. Okay. Would you sell many in the south as a comparison to the north? Uh, at the minute, uh, not too many, v very few to be honest until. Uh, Again, uh, it's, it's one of those items that uh, that does need a bit of grant support. Yeah, and finally, say it. the from the time somebody orders one to when it's fitted, what, what you know, how long is it? The lead time and how long to the fit? lead time? The lead time on that you're talking somewhere between four to five weeks. Right there on on that. And how long to fit it? Uh, two days. Yeah. How many For people? Three to four people. Okay. Is there a crane needed or anything? There's a crane a crane needed on the second day. And that's for lifting everything in place. The first day will basically putting on your your support angle, and putting on the, the the straps where the ratchets are going on. So that's basically the first day and getting ready, and then the, so the, the next morning crane starts early, and uh, they should be out of there by by the afternoon. Okay. And what sort of guarantee is with it? Uh, ten year guarantee. Ten year guarantee. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you.